Hello everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Red Raptor Rights, where today we are finishing the Dead Sound Dinosauria series. It's been quite a long road. I mean, it's only the fifth episode, so not that long, but you know, I have to intersperse it with my other content. So it's been a bit of a long road here. Um, if you're new to this, go back and watch my previous videos on Dinosauria. This is an awesome YouTube animated series about life in the late Cretaceous in North America, where it just shows different, uh, different short videos about uh, different animals, what they're going through, just little tidbits about life back in this time. And it, uh, the creator, his name is David, David something, does a great job with the designs, with the behaviors, with uh, the soundtrack and the visuals. It's it's all phenomenally done. It's it's excellent. Some of the best stuff uh, to come out recently for Paleo Media. And today is the final video of that, The Last Tyrant. I don't remember much about what happens in this one. Uh, it has to do with Tyrannosaurus, okay, I can tell you that much. <laughs> Tyrannosaurus is in the thumbnail, but that would make this the latest episode. Most of them are in the Campanian. Uh, this is the Maastrichtian, the end of the Maastrichtian. And you might see the ears, I do have a new a little friend with me today. This is my new puppy, Indiana. Indiana, do you want to say hi? Do you want to say anything? I don't know, he's quiet. Maybe he speaks Spanish. Oh, yeah, he, he's very quiet. He's very polite. He's a very good boy. He's my new little Westie pup. He's only four months old. I just got him a few days ago, and welcome to the channel, Indiana. Yeah, my wife got him for me as a birthday present. Uh, he's so wonderful, so sweet. He's very nice, but he's going to be joining us today. This is his first time seeing dinosaurs. He's doing such a good job, aren't you? Alright, I'm gonna stop bothering him. <laughs> I'll leave him down here for right now. If I wanna bring him back up, I'll, I'll move him back up. <laughs> but he's gonna come and experience this with me. But without further delay, we have 10 minutes of Dinosauria. Usually the episodes are short, like only 4-ish minutes. No, we have a 10 minute one, so... Let's get started. I'm going into this blind. I, uh, dinosaurs die. Alright, cool. Let, let's see. Okay, so this is probably um, Alamosaurus. This is like the only sauropod in North America at this time. During the Campanian, you don't see sauropods in North America. It's very strange. They just disappear from the fossil record like after the early mid Cretaceous. Um, yeah, and then suddenly pops back Alamosaurus. Some speculate it's a transplant from South America, a titanosaur um, related to the South American titanosaurs that just appears in North America. Okay, cool. <laughs> but this would be more like the Southern US, like uh, Texas. They are beautiful though. They do a very good job with them. Uh, not much else to say. I really like the patterning on their necks and their faces. It's a good design. Oh, I like the armor here. Um, titanosaurs. Some titanosaurs are known to have had armor, like osteoderms. Oh, no. No, no, don't do that. Oh, gosh. Alright, here we go. We're starting already. We see these beautiful sauropods, and then it's just death for them. Oh, <laughs> And he wants to bite uh, the keyboard. No, he's still in that age where he likes to uh, chew. Uh, he'll he'll nibble on anything you put in front of him. <laughs> Very cute. Okay, let's see. Some type of um, bird. Probably yeah, it's an actual true bird from the Cretaceous. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm down. I'm down. Not sure exactly what species this is. Hi, are you okay? You okay? Oh, alright. <laughs> it's nibbling on my headphones. Come on. <laughs> Come on, little boy. Alright, so this is some sort of, uh... Struthiomimus or Ornithomimus, maybe? They don't, they don't say, like, Hi, my name is Ornithomimus. No, so, uh, one of those two. One of those two. Um, I really like this design here. It looks very nice. 
Um, this one's clearly feathered. Like, the Pteranodon, I was kind of on the fence. Like, was that feathered? Was that... This is clearly feathered. It has wings. Um, looks very uh, ostrich-like. Ornithomimus means bird mimic. Shutiomimus is... Uh, ostrich mimic. I think Gallimimus is a chicken mimic, but that's not going to be here. So, alright, one of those two. It looks cool. It's just like, uh, just like in The Land Before Time. Those are the two best Jutiomimus. Alright. Dang, I really love that animation. Uh, uh, I was just thinking, I was just walking in the, and I saw a bird, like, land, and I was just thinking about how, how difficult it must be to animate flight for a bird. I don't know why I'm thinking of this, and it just comes up. But look at all these creatures they have here. Uh, Pachycephalosaurus here on the bottom. Uh, Edmontosaurus and Nectins. Triceratops, and then you have your Ornithomimus. And is this Tyrannosaurus in the background? Are they being sneaky? But everyone's living peacefully at the moment. Oh, oh, sorry. We have to do. I have to do that once every episode. I think. All right, the Amazonosaurus looks pretty good. I like it. I I like it how it, it, there's no actual duck bill dinosaurs. Like that's the skeleton. The skull will look a little duck billy, but they have this big beak coming down their face. So it's not an actual duck bill. But cool, cool. And it has the little scoots like. Uh, as it does. And this one has a big chunk taken out of it. Okay, is that a bite mark? Is that a reference to, uh... uh Admonosaurus with a damaged tail vertebrae? I think so. Okay, it's going full on head button. This is cool. I'm down for it. Uh, Triceratops. Hmm. I don't know. A little suspect. I, uh... The grown adult with its epicipitals sticking out, I think those would be much rounder, smaller, more fused into the frill at this point in its adult stage. And the horns are kind of more Triceratops horridus, more curved and then pointing upwards. It's more horridus when at this time at the very end of the Cretaceous, like 66 million years ago, would be Triceratops prorsus. You sniffing me. Thank you for that, Indy. Thank you. Um, and then this one should have bigger epicipitals, the, the juvenile. And maybe the horn more curved back. This is more like a young uh, teen, kind of, in the middle up there. Okay. The color scheme's a little interesting. Um, alright, alright. Not sure it'd be my choice to make everything yellow and golden, but it, it's kind of working for it. So here comes Tyrannosaurus. Ah, fully lipped Tyrannosaurus. Thank you, thank you for that. It can close its mouth. It can cover its teeth. I... Okay, I know I have to keep pausing it. I know I have to be annoying just so I don't get copyright stricken, but... There was another dead sound animation with Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops. I forget what that was called. I wonder, was that... I guess it's not part of the Dinosauria series. Is that like an early animation test run for this? Maybe I'm going crazy. Maybe that was someone else too. Uh, I like that uh, eyes pointing forward. It has that binocular vision where it can face you. Its eyes aren't to the side of its head. Oh, it has that nice keratin over its uh, it's like a lacrimal crest, and then the post-orbital crest. I don't know, the other ones, but, uh, maybe. Very bumpy, very rugose, sure. I like that they, uh, got the hands right, facing inwards, of course, and the, the second digit is longer than this first digit. And these arms are still powerful, they can still lift. They're not like the vestigial carnotaurus arms that I'm writing about right now for my dinosaur review of Disney's dinosaur. But he's just chilling, he's a good boy. I love the pachycephalosaurus design. This is spot on. Oh, are you thirsty? All right, we'll get water after this, I'm sorry. 
Oh, look at that. So, they just, you know, no action required. There doesn't need to always be a giant T-Rex chase. They're, they're just vibing. He just wanted a drink, all right? He just wanted his doc, Dr. Kelp. Oh, and the T-Rex is a mama. Or a dad. Hi. Oh, he looks so cute. So cute. Oh, no, both parents. All right, so you don't get abandoned. Are they the same? They look about the same. Same uh, model. This one might be a little more colorful, if I'm going crazy or not. I don't know, but same. So, um, which makes sense. Is this a uh, myth, which might be a future paleo myth, the queen T-Rex trope where the female theropod is much larger than the male theropod and dominates it. See that in uh, Walk With Dinosaurs and Prehistoric Park and uh, Big Al, the Ballad of Big Al. With Allosaurus, of course. Um, they used to think that there was a Gracile and then Chunky Morph of T Rex, and the Gracile one was the male, the Thick Morph was a female. It, that's kind of fallen out of favor. You know, we really can't tell which one's male, which one's female. Except a few where you find medullary bone, but then you don't find that in every specimen, so you can't catalog which one is always male, which one's always female, then chart them and then see where they land. It's sexual dimorphism in dinosaurs is very, very difficult to tell. There are only a few small instances where you can kind of like squint your eyes and say maybe. <laughs> but I like that they have different markings on them so you can tell them apart and they're, you know, have different combat experiences. Oh, this is romantic. They're gonna watch the world burn together. Alright, interesting. Cool. Oh, now I feel bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're all gonna die. Oh, I really like... That's interesting. This... Is this supposed to be more sexual dimorphism? This one has a flatter skull. This one has a broader skull. I will say, I don't think there's any evidence for that. Of the packy skulls we have, we really cannot say that there's this kind of sexual dimorphism in this. Usually the ones with the flatter skulls are um, sub-adult teenager uh, pachycephalosauruses, not females. And right now there's this whole ongoing thing of, uh, well, we haven't seen much publication, but there's some speculation that pachycephalosaurus wyomingensis, as we know it, looking like this, was a little earlier, like 68, 67 million years ago, and then you get to Pachycephalosaurus uh, spinifer, which would be Stiggy Moloch, just a later species of Pachycephalosaurus. So rather than a, teender, a teenager of Pachycephalosaurus, it would be a later species of Pachycephalosaurus. Uh, no publications out right on that right now. Uh, I'm just talking out of my butt and what I hear some chatter about. Um, the future will tell us. We don't know. I made a whole video, a whole payload it's on Paggy Cephalosaurus ontogeny, so go check that out. But, uh, I would still bet my money that Stiggy Moloch is some sort of young Paggy Cephalosaurus. Interesting how, again, they don't go for the goat eyes on their large herbivores, but alright. Interesting decision. And, uh,. Do I have to watch this? Do I have to watch the non-avian dinosaurs get obliterated again? <laughs> I don't want to see this. I don't. I, I don't. It's too sad. They were. They're such beautiful creatures. I know. I know, Wendy. It's sad. Cover your eyes. Cover your eyes here. I'm covering his eyes. You're such a cutie. Oh, that's interesting. He has the uh. Psittacosaurus has the Psittacosaurus feathers on its tail. Um, all right, all right, interesting, okay. Cool idea. We know that even um, Ornithischians had feathers on them. Uh, the early Ceratopsian, excuse me, Psittacosaurus seen with feathers on its tail. Um, there's a very, very well-preserved specimen of that. But then it's kind of become this thing where paleo artists just take what we found on Psittacosaurus, and then 
copy and paste it onto other Ceratopsians. And I don't really know if that works. I don't think it works like that. He's just like sleeping on my keyboard. <laughs> He's a little baby. Hiroshima, 1945. <laughs> yeah, that's an oof and a half. Oof and a half right there. What I remember about the rise of the Empire is, is how quiet it was. Alright, yeah, yeah, the world's ending. I don't know, once you're in North America, like the Hell Creek Formation, Montana, maybe uh, Alberta, Saskatchewan, you know, that area. Would you have been instantly just eviscerated by the explosion? I've seen different charts of it, and I don't, I don't remember what they say. Like, up to a certain extent, yes, you get exploded, pretty much you're in the blast radius, but then after that, it's more forest fires, um, killing you. <laughs> And then your whole world is covered in soot and ash and debris. Oh well. Yeah, I don't know if like once you're up that far north that you're just getting nuked. <laughs> oh. No, they're all dead. But if they were to get nuked, I mean their bodies would just be like flung and eviscerated. I said that word twice already. All right. <laughs> I don't know if they would look so peaceful as this. So basically, at this point, every large-bodied animal dies. Uh, if you're anything bigger than like a small, <laughs> a burrowing creature, you're dead. You're going extinct. Maybe at this point, you might have some scavengers living, but once they run out of free meat, then they die. <laughs> Very sad. Oh, oh, it... <laughs> hey, who left this bowl of onions here? And of course, um, what made the dinosaurs very successful, their higher metabolisms, their ability to be uh, endothermic, regulate their own body temperature, and... Well, that requires more energy, more food. So if you are endothermic, starve easier. <laughs> you use up more energy maintaining your body heat. Keeping a high metabolism, so then you're gonna starve and die. <laughs> but if you're like a crocodilian or crocodile morph or a lizard or anything like that, you, uh, well, you can burrow, you can maybe ha eat once a year, <laughs> something crazy like that, and you'll be okay. So then you have a higher rate of survival. Then once you get into the Paleocene right after this, it doesn't start off with the mammals instantly dominating the landscape. It starts off with a lot of reptiles going back, <laughs> um, like Titanoboa. Um, yeah, that was only a few million years after this. They attained large sizes once again, once the forest recovered. Oh no, Quetzal Koalas, we didn't even get to see you alive, we just see you dead, <laughs> just... Oh, poor guy. <laughs> Though, you know, let's look at your dead body. Eh, yeah, your skull looks good enough. There's a crest, we don't know the exact shape of the crest. The beak is, uh... Alright, it's good, it's good. <laughs> oh no, they're all dead. And the hands look good, though. Has the three, uh, fingered hands plus the giant fourth finger extending out. The long neck. Big straight skull. I don't know how you survive, Mr. Alamosaurus, but, uh, you're doing okay. Oh, yeah, this would be, uh, more southern in the Javelina Formation, Quetzalcoatlus and Alamosaurus. So this is, again, Texas. Um, maybe northern Mexico. They would be much closer to the blast than the Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops. I don't know how you survived. Ah, look at that. No, no claws, no toes showing. Alright, pretty good. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> He's just getting coffee on my arm, trying to find a nice position to sleep in. 
It's so sad, but I do love this design. It's so sad, but it's so pretty and cool. Alright, everything is just destroyed. This looks like you're in Fallout. Which is a great show so far. I'm very much enjoying it. I didn't finish it yet. No spoilers in the comments, but so far, as a almost lifelong-ish Fallout fan, I don't know, I've been playing since I was like 10. Uh, very good so far. Very good. Yeah, see, okay, so they were still alive. Maybe the ones that were able to burrow and take cover. Oh no. Oh gosh. <laughs> what? What'd you get out of here? Yeah, that's that's what the Alamosaurus should have been looking like. But how did you survive? You're getting destroyed. How did you? Oh, I'm gonna stop questioning it. Uh, it's kind of inconsistent with who gets to live and who gets to die and why and where and how. Whatever. Okay. Oh no. Oh my gosh. Oh, they did the feather chick thing. Are those tears or you just bleeding from your eyes like you're super edgy? Like, like you're an android ready to go see My Chemical Romance. Do you know who that is? Oh, he's just licking my face now. Alright, this is... this is good. Alright, thank you for that. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate it. Ah, and then the back feet have the three claws sticking outwards. And yeah, you gotta die. You, you, you need way too much food to survive. <laughs> well, that is so depressing. Let's make this as depressing as humanly possible. Alright, fine. Hey, look, look, it's the dead Alamosaurus. Do you think that's interesting? Bro, I was just looking at all his dead friends and family right before his eyes. <laughs> Didn't we really need this? And now it's time for you to die too. Nope, you're gone. Reduced to atoms. And you're dead too. Wow, we just have to see everyone die in real time. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. This reminds me of uh, <laughs> Infinity War. You know, we all went to the theater so hyped. I didn't know what was going to happen. And we walked out, everyone was just so depressed. <laughs> I went to go see it with Beth, my sister, who's been on the channel a few times, and uh, yeah, that was depressing. I took her to get ice cream after that. <laughs> Maybe I need to get some, myself some ice cream after this. Yeah, that's you know very edgy view. So were you the last time? Were you the last T Rex alive? Um, <laughs> I remember in Dinosaur Revolution, this is a better story than what Dinosaur Revolution gave us. Like, the last T-Rex is this teenager. I know, he just he was in a cave when the blast happened. And he came out, he was going about his life, and he dies by just, like, slipping and falling and bashing his head on a rock. Like, that's the way the last T-Rex is gonna go? Are you kidding me? It was very, uh, underwhelming. Uh, I don't know if that's how fossilization works. <laughs> oh, yeah, probably would have been buried... You have to be buried rapidly to fossilize well. If you're just laying out there, the elements are gonna get ya. Um, scavengers are gonna get ya and scatter you, scatter you around. You're not gonna fossilize well. You need to be buried pretty rapidly for a good specimen. Yeah, they don't just sit out in the open. And yes, of course, we get the obligatory, alright, uh, the birds in the end. The birds are the living dinosaurs. Um, they survived the impact. And went on to inherit the earth. Oh, so we're gonna see all the features that- Oh, okay, that's an interesting, uh... Or, you know, we could just show the bird that was living there in the Cretaceous, but that's an interesting parallel. Although, uh... The beak is probably, what would you call it, analogous. They evolved beak independently. That, you know, these very derived theropods, birds, and the uh, ceratopsians. Hi. Oh, he's so precious. He's such a precious baby. Oh, good boy. All right. And then we have, yeah, birds today. 
living alongside mankind while all the other dinosaurs died. Cool, cool. Oh, I know that specimen. Was that the specimen we saw? Did they try to make that in the more ancient spring, the one with the injured back? That would be interesting, but that's a cool parasol office. Alright, uh, sat at Charles all night. I don't really know my, uh, my old dino vintage dinosaur painting. See, was that a reference? Are these references? Like, you got your old buck, you have your more ancient spring, you have your, uh, the Tudra one, the snowy one. <laughs> and here's old buck right here. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, I don't know if that's what they want. Yep, that's old buck. There we go. Haha, <laughs> I see. I see where you're going with this. I see where you're going with this. Very cool. Very cool, Kanye. Alright. I don't remember that part. Was that like a deleted scene or am I just going crazy? Maybe I'm going crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, where's the reference to the Pteranodon? I mean, the birds aren't related to Pteranodon. The Pteranodon's not a dinosaur or a relative of the birds, but, uh, you know, where's the Pteranodon references? Hi. Maybe that was, like, the ocean one? The vintage? I don't remember that either. <laughs> I know I would have remembered that if I saw that, if that happened here. Oh look, he has to animate people now. How are the people? Oh, they look pretty good. And there's a giraffe in the background, All right? Is that Megalodon in the background? We got a glimpse of Megalodon? Is that a... Uh... Is that a hint to the next one? No, there's, there's no next one. <laughs> and here you have footage of uh, the different videos. This is more ancient spring right now. And that's how it ends for you. Thank you, David James Armstrong, for such a great series. Uh, I've been loving every episode. They're all so well done. This one... Must have taken a lot of effort. Like, you have to animate the entire museum. You have to animate people. Um, all these different creatures. Um, yeah. <laughs> it seems like a lot. <laughs> and birds seem like a pain in the butt to animate. I'll tell you that much for free. Um, this one. Uh, I've been ranking them all. And mostly they were either between, like, an A or an A-. minus. So I guess it's time to rank this one. Hi. Maybe not a perfect A. I think I'm comfortable giving it an A minus. And because most of them have been A minuses, I think that means that Dinosauria gets a very high A minus. Yeah. Um, this has been such a fun experience going back and rewatching these, seeing uh, what science David pulled for his videos. What references he's making to the literature. Um, how... Excuse me. Excuse me. He's talking on my headphones. <laughs> um, if there have been any changes in the science. What's different? What's new? What do people think nowadays? Yeah, it's been fun. I think overall he's done such a great job. There have been a few claims, you know, especially with the sexual dimorphism stuff and some of them. And... Maybe a bit of the geography and the snowy one. I don't know. A few things, a few small details here and there that um, don't necessarily go with the science. But again, this isn't a documentary. These are short films. So he has creative license to do what he thinks makes it look cool and more interesting, more engaging. Which is totally fine by me. Overall, the science is still phenomenal, even if there are a few nitpicks. It's for the art of it. Yes, do you agree? Do you agree? Alright, so... <laughs> so that was fun. Um, say goodbye. Give one last look.
he, he, he doesn't see the camera. He doesn't really care. <laughs> Alright, guys. Right, if you enjoyed this episode, this series, so please leave a like, subscribe, and then check out my social media. See you next time.